If you're having problems hard carrying on Ana, I have a special treat for you. In this video, we're going to be breaking down NYXL J. Jonix Ana. Definitely one of the top three Anas in the entire world. So if you want to learn how to have insane positioning, make amazingly powerful solo impact plays, and really hard carry your teammates and ranked, go ahead and smash the like button. Let's not waste any time and jump right into it, shall we? So the first thing that you really need to understand is J. Jonix positioning. Notice how he starts on the high ground, but he can easily transverse to the low ground. This is really important because it allows him to bail out his allies but playing the high ground makes him harder to kill and really safe the important takeaway here is that the high ground is really powerful and it's extremely easy to transverse from the high ground to the low ground at any time but if you want to transition to the high ground at any time it's not really feasible as someone like Ana. so you really want to start in the strong positioning and adjust your positioning to help your team when you need to now, blink and you'll miss it, but the play that J. Jonak just pulled off right here actually completely hard carried his team. And this is the pinnacle of potential on someone like Ana. Let's really break it down to give you insight on what he actually pulled off here. So, J. Jonak is playing in an interesting position to set this play up. He's adjacent of his run, but he's still near natural cover, and he still can go to his team if he needs. Now, check out this pin perfect nade right to the lamppost it actually manages to anti two separate people and kills the ryan instantly because he was antied and it frankly hard carries this entire fight one nade changed the whole dynamic of this fight because mano and j mac were in a stamina sorts both constantly healing each other up but getting this one value nade in completely destroyed that dynamic and prevented the enemy ryan from being able to get healed up at all that's the power of ana that's something that i can't stress enough now i know that the vast majority of us can't hit amazing nades just like Jay Jonek, right? That's really difficult to do, but there's something that you can really take from how he throws his nade. Look in this next fight, how he throws his nade against the wall. This is something that Jay Jonek will do a lot. Even if he really didn't hit that light post, he would have definitely naded at least something. That's what you got to practice on, Ana. That's what you got to take into your games. You could throw your nades just above on the back wall of something and splash all the people underneath. This is really powerful to do if you want to play on you don't have to hit nades directly you don't have to aim for their feet if you hit the back wall you could potentially splash everyone behind the enemy reinhardt jay Junik looks to do that in almost every fight when he can get away with it and it's a really powerful use of his nade and it really carries a lot of fights so if you like this video you should definitely go check out gameleap.com we have in-depth grandmaster vod reviews just like this one that break it down play by play do yourself a favor and go check it out you won't regret it now moving further along this vod we need to go back to J Jonex positioning and yes i know i keep talking about positioning on ana but that is one of the most important things that you need to learn on ana if you want to carry if you're dying too much it's usually due to your positioning notice how Jay Jonek often will play around natural cover he'll play in line of sight of his allies but not necessarily in line of sight of the enemy notice exactly where he's playing here he's all the way out of danger he can see his allies and heal them provide impact plays heal them up throw nades stuff like that but he's not allowing himself to get potentially farmed by the enemy no one can come for him here no one can even pressure him here he's playing out of the effective range of ryan diva lucio mccree he's really in the back of his team that's something that you should start trying to do in your games really use on his range that's something that's so powerful and jay Jonic really uses to an insane effectiveness he can distance itself pretty dynamically from his allies he peeks up for certain instances where he can actually pressure the enemy with something like a sleep dart or a nade but most of the time he's playing extremely far back and if anyone wanted to come for him it would be extremely hard and they would have to use tons of resources even to get over to jay jonek now another thing that you might take note is how he aims of course jay jonek is extremely extremely accurate i mean his mechanical skill is probably one of the best in the world dps or not he just has insane mechanical skill but there are several things that you can actually take from how he kind of aims. And there's some things that you might not know about how Ana aims in general. So firstly, when you're aiming at allies and you're using your scope, you don't even have to be pinpoint accurate. All you have to do is get your allies in the actual triangle. So a lot of times from farther ranges, when Jejonic is not as confident in hitting his shots, just not aiming down the sight. A lot of times, Jejonic will quickscope if he needs to heal his allies faster. That's really important for you to understand in your games because quickscoping is a really powerful tool. It's not just flashy. It actually allows your weapon to be hit scan, and the shots are actually easier to hit on your allies. I mean, once you get used to it, extremely easy to heal your allies with the quickscope, and it's a hit scan weapon, so it's always going to be reliable if you practice it. Now, you might be asking, if it's so great, then why don't you just do it 100% of the time? Well, there's actually one pretty big disadvantage that I really need to talk about here. When you look down the site, you actually get a tracer so people can see where you're shooting from. 
that's really important for you to understand because if you're hiding from a distance in these cross angles like Jay Jonak takes, just like I was talking about, you really need to keep your presence unknown. If you just shooting without aiming down the sight, no one can see the actual fire of Ana, which is really, really important for being incognito. Now, they're trying to hold the last fight on the last point on defense, and we got to go back to Jay Jonak's positioning. I mean, I know I repeat it time and time again, but just look at how smart he plays over here. He's playing a cross angle. He has so much natural cover. He can hide behind this pole. He hides from the enemy McCree. Now, something else that you really need to start taking from Jay Jonak and applying it to your play is look Look at the high impact plays he makes aggressively. He just naded both the tanks with his nade. That pretty much secures the fight for his team. He throws tons of sleep darts down these natural progression choke points. A lot of these get surprising amount of value. I mean, the thing about Jay Jonik is he is not afraid to be aggressive with his abilities. If you go for a play like a nade and you hit it, you're going to win the game for your team. I mean, getting a two or three person nade is usually a team fight win in a close matchup. Now, granted, you're not going to be able to have these sleep darts. You're not going to be able to have these nades for if the enemy comes and pursues you. But Jay Jonik makes up for a lot of that with his positioning. He knows what the enemy team is playing. He knows that there's no Doomfist or Tracers or Genjis that can come after him. And he knows that if the enemy does come after him because of where he's positioned, he has so much time to kite away, to hide behind natural cover, to get his cooldowns back. And he's even confident in dueling a lot of enemies. So you can just see the confidence in Jay Jonak. Smart, safe positioning allows you to make more aggressive plays. He's not inting into the enemy backline and throwing nades. He knows how to arc the nades. So he doesn't have to go int into the enemy team to throw a nade. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've seen Anas in my ranked games, even all the way up to Grandmasters, who will get extremely close to the enemy to try to get like flank nades and throw down like right on top of an enemy with a nade or a sleep or stuff like that. And this can be powerful and it can work sometimes, even I've done it in the past. But Jay Jodak has mastered and perfected the arc of the nade. He knows where to throw these sleep darts to where they'll catch opponents for free. And he does it for these completely safe ranges that it's actually impossible for the enemy team to even punish him for misusing or just using his abilities on cooldown. That is what's so powerful about Jay Jodak's playstyle. Good positioning equals more proactive plays if you practice. So here's the takeaway that you need to start doing in your games. If you play Ana and you want to get insanely good on Ana, you don't have to learn these crazy Hail Mary nades from up top. What you do need to learn is how to consistently arc a nade where you want to. Practice it in training room, get unlimited nades, practice hitting back walls, practice against bots, learn exactly how to hit a nade exactly where you want to every single time. Secondly, start working on your positioning fundamentals. Really take into account where Jay Jonak is playing in a lot of these games. Notice right here in this first attack, he's playing the high ground. He routed to the high ground with him and his team on attack. This is an insane positioning to take. And frankly, it's incredibly powerful. The high ground is so strong from a vantage point. I mean, the enemy really can't do anything to stop Jay Jonak at this point. He gets free nades in, he gets free rain down. I mean, he's just so impactful here. If you can do all these things, this is how you tap into the same playmaking potential that Jay Jonak brings to the table each and every game. I mean, he's frankly a force to be reckoned with. I don't know if any of you watched Overwatch League Season 1, but Jay Jonak is an extremely aggressive support. And for all you supports that feel like you don't have the impact to carry your teams in ranked, Jay Jonak would probably hard carry just about any game at any rank. I mean, even Grand Master, he's hard carrying. This guy is nuts. His proactive plays are insane, he's extremely hard to punish, he makes low mistakes, and he's definitely someone that we can learn more from. Now in this last fight, I mean it's literally the last fight or else they lose, I just kind of want to culminate all the things together and just really emphasize just how impactful being able to do some of the things that Jay Jonah can do. Even without mechanical skill, you can pull this off. But if you can build that mechanical skill to a higher level, you can pull off these insane plays even more. Look at this nade right into the box. I mean, he hits the box. It actually splatters the back wall and antis three people on the enemy team in this incredibly close fight. It was undoubtedly the game changer. I mean, Jay Jonah ultimately dies here. He ultimately gets punished for this, but... He really turned the tables on the enemy simply due to that one nade. And that's what I can't express enough about Ana when it comes to raw heals, right? You could be playing a Baptist or more and just heal up your allies to insane amount of heals and that's fine. What Jay Jonak looks to do is he finds these playmaking opportunities 
in between healing his team to their maximum health. I mean, he's not necessarily giving them to the max. He's he's healing them enough to ensure they don't die, but he's finding playmaking high impact plays in between him doing his job. Because ultimately, the nade on the enemy is what wins the fight. He just has to ensure that his team doesn't die before these plays come out. Now, you can do things to practice these plays. You can get better at making these plays. And that's something that I want for each and every one of you. Now you know the standard. Jay Jonik is like the gold standard. I mean, he might not be the best Ana in the world. I mean, there's some other contenders for that spot. But if you're talking about Anas that have the highest carry potential, solo carry potential, which is like a ranked play style. If you want to, you know, have the highest impact, win the most games in ranked, you want to adopt a solo carry play style. The number one has to undoubtedly be Jay Jonik. And if you really take anything from how he plays, Keep in mind that the better you get mechanically at hitting some of these grenade arcs, hitting the back wall, things like that, the more safe you can play and still pull these plays off. So just really practice that. Don't be afraid if you can start a little bit closer when you first start off trying to hit some of these nades, but eventually you're going to be way better at it. You're going to be able to play farther back and still get these nades off. And don't be afraid to look for some of these playmaking opportunities. That's the power level of Ana. That's what I was getting to before. Anti Sleep Dart and Nano are three extremely powerful abilities and if you think critically about how to use them and you use them proactively in a lot of your games you will have tons of impact from the support role and you will climb now if you want to learn how to master nades master 1v1s and become an on a master as quickly as possible definitely come check out gameleap.com we got in-depth grandmaster vod reviews just like this one that will put you in the mindset of tons of grandmaster players as well as advanced concepts that really break down how exactly to hit these insanely high impact nades and sleep darts do yourself a favor and come check us out. You won't regret it. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. I hope this guide has been extremely helpful for you. If you have any questions about Jay Jonak, Ana in general, or just Overwatch, please let me know. I would love to break it down for you. That's all I have for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and until next time, 